Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today we are going to talk about the current RTA meta. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. So if you've been paying attention to RTA streams on Twitch or, you know, games posted on YouTube, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of counter shenanigans going on and it's pretty unhealthy for the game. So Rem and Violet are the two big offenders in this and they're very meta-defining at the moment. It's kind of sad. Uh, their counters are so impactful that you know the entire game can be decided without player input, just in a few the course of a few turns of you know how much they counter basically, and uh, I think that's really unhealthy for the game. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, however, it has gotten a lot worse in the last few weeks, I think, and the reason why is because there there was a unit that we could draft that would counter Violet and would counter Rem. Uh, that unit is Spectre Tenebria. However, because of Bellion we can no longer take her. Uh, when Bellion came out, you know, it was, oh, she's going to kill Cleave, and Cleave won't be able to do anything anymore because Bellion takes away your souls. And the focus was all on Cleave and the souls. Bellion has not really impacted Cleave that much. Um, you know, AOL came out and kind of shut down Pavel, um, but Cleave has, and always will adapt, to either utilize a new hero or to just build in a way that that hero doesn't impact it anymore. Um, Cleave is really just taking the first turn, like that's never going to go away, no matter what heroes they release, unless, you know, they, they just release a hero that, I guess, invalidates speed entirely. But until then, it's always going to be an issue. And so Bellion's biggest impact, really, has been to counter Spectre Tenebria. She also counters Landy to a degree, but if you pair Landy with FCC, it's really not as bad. Uh, the reason why she counters Spectre so much more is because Spectre Tenebria, one of her big strengths was her powerful Soul Burn. And without access to that, she just does not dish out enough damage to be impactful during the match. Um, you know, with Spectre, you were really able to load a ton of damage into one turn and just delete a unit. Um, now you can't do that with her. Um, so you just kind of like poke the enemy every turn and do nothing. Um, let alone Bellion's, you know, AoE uh, able to reach Spectre and also debuff her and invalidate her in that way as well. So. I've decided I'm going to be pre-banning Bellion for at least the next couple weeks. Maybe the collab on the horizon will change things, but unless the meta shifts dramatically, I think Bellion is going to be my pre-ban, and that will allow me to take Spectre again. And allowing me to take Spectre really lets you handle Rem and Violet much better than otherwise, right? Uh, we can still take Landy. Landy's another good option into them, but I think Spectre is really the savior against those two. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few matches with a Bellion pre-ban and relatively little RNG. Okay, so for this game, I pre ban Bellion. Uh, I've been pre banning Bellion whether I'm first or second pick. The only exception to that would be is if I'm going against an opponent that I know very well and I know that they either do not have Bellion or that if they have her, they either don't draft her or there's you know a super problematic unit that I do need to pre ban. So, for example, if I go against somebody who severely outgears me and can easily cleave me with Caesarea, for example, then I'd pre ban the Caesarea. Uh, so the opponent first picks Carmen, which is kind of an interesting first pick. You don't see that a lot. Uh, I assume it's to stay open, you know, kind of like a first pick FCC or something. Um, Carmen's very defensive, though, so it kind of shows you what their game plan is with the first pick Carmen. Um, I take Maid and Spectre. With the Bellion pre-ban, Maid and Spectre are both very high, you know, priority picks. Uh, the opponent takes Landy and ML Haste to counter the Maid, but AOL is on the field, and so I think that's a huge misplay from the opponent since AOL hard counters Landy and ML Haste. Um, additionally, the opponent has no counters for debuffs here, and only one DPS. So they have two picks left, and they don't have uh, a cleanse, which means that I can take another debuffer last, and they pretty much either commit to taking two cleansers, and then I can ban their DPS, or they take one cleanser, and then that gets banned. And now they have to deal with debuffs. Um, so that's the situation we see here. They take LQC to counter the Ravi, and then Amelia to cleanse away the debuffs. Um, however, we can just ban away Amelia, and we can take a debuffer here like Basar, for example. Um, you could take, like, potentially Tea Time if you didn't have Basar built. But any hero that could just control the game. Um, ML Tywin would be very good, but they already have multiple sources of immunity. And so you need um, a debuffer that can also strip. So we take Basar. Ban out the Amelia. Um, so now we get one or two debuffers, which should be more than enough to severely cripple the enemy team. 
if they ban out one of our DPS, I think we still have enough damage to, you know, take them down. So they ban Spectre, and I think that's, if they're going to ban the two DPS, I guess Spectre is the better choice because they don't have reach for Spectre other than Landy. Um, LQC could theoretically get a dunk on Apoc. Uh, I'm not super concerned about it though because I have made, so not a huge deal if it does happen. Uh, we take first turn here, and so I think we just let skill 3 rip with Angelica, no reason to hold it. So that lands everything, which is pretty crippling for the opponent. And now we can just, you know, delete units one by one. Um, I decided to de uh, delete LQC first. I feel like she poses a pretty big threat. I mean, I guess it could go on Landy. Probably doesn't matter too terribly much. Um, skill two here with Bissar. Uh He's on Abyssal Crown and high effectiveness. So, um, you know, he'll be pretty good at keeping the enemy team crippled. Um, I just skill one with Maid. Uh, on the off chance that Landy breaks out of control, I don't want Landy to go crazy with skill threes, um, and that could happen theoretically. Um, the opponent does get a lucky dual attack onto Angel of Light here, uh, and crits twice through Misty buff, which is pretty unfortunate for me. But that's okay. Um, we go ahead and skill uh, one of the LQC, just kind of you know keep chipping her down. Haste is coming up, um, but we have Basar, so we can push him back. You know, and prevent him from getting a turn. Uh, we do not want Haste to use skill 3 and then heal up the LQC. That would be not good. Uh, I could skill 3 with a maid here, but I think it's better just to skill 1 and get the CR push and keep chipping down while pushing my team up. You know, I, I don't need attack buff. Uh, to kill them. Um, I just kind of want maximum debuffs, and CR pushing helps enable that. I debate about going for the stun on Crimson Arm in there, uh, but I figure let's just kill the LQC. It doesn't really matter if Carmen takes a turn. So haste is silent, so he can only skill one. Carmen gets a turn, but can't really do anything since... Everyone has buff block. Go for the stun on LQC and we get it, so that's really nice. Uh, I debate about skill 3 in here, but I don't think I need the skill 3 to score the kill, so we can just save it for later. Okay, and now the only unit we have to worry about is Landy. Uh, so Landy does get a lucky dual attack there to see our push up. But we have Angel of Light's skill 3 again, so we are able to use that to prevent the skill 3 from Landy. She also has attack down, so that's going to you know prevent her from doing a ton. Um, Haste is uh, able to come in here and kill the Angelica, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but this is one of the nice things about Ravi. I go for the kill here, and uh, I guess I could have just waited a cycle to make sure I got it. Maybe that, that was probably greedy. Uh, we get a dual attack, though, because I deserve it. And that's game. Okay, another game, another belly and pre-ban. With the belly and pre-ban, you do, I suppose, have to worry a bit about the Caesarea Cleave. Uh, there aren't a ton of people on the ladder, though, that can actually pull it off well. So, you know, you're not going to beat everyone. Um, that's kind of my perspective on that. Uh, so very interesting. The opponent pre-bans Angel of Light Angelica and first picks by Saria. So that's pretty awesome. I think this guy used to have an Elfelt uh, rep and people called him Elfelt guy and he would pick, I think, like all waifus. I think that's this player. Um, I take Maid and Steny, I think, yeah, Steny. Um, I think Maid is really good into Viseria because you can cleanse all of her debuffs away. And then Steny, um, you know, kind of hides. So Viseria can hit with skill 3, but then doesn't really have reach beyond that. Uh, interesting uh, picks following this. The opponent takes Carmen and Operator Sigrid. So, you know, Carmen's pretty strong mitigation unit. 
Um, Operator Secret's a little odd, given that I haven't taken FCC yet. Usually you see, you know, Operator Secret is a counter to that. I suppose it would be a potential way to deter me from taking FCC. Um, so I'm honestly not really sure what to do here. It looks like the opponent is going for some sort of uh, cleave or um, I guess like, I don't know, just they have two AoE strips, so I can't really take Landy. Um, I debate about taking Crow here, but to be honest, I'm not really sure what Crow would do. Um, Operator Sigrid would hide in Guiding Light, I assume, and Viseria would have Invulnerable. Um, I decide that I need to take the first turn, so I take FCC, and then I take um, Tea Time Tenebria. I think Tea Time is really strong into all three of these heroes. So I wanted to take Tea Time, but I didn't want the opponent to have, I guess, FCC as an option. I guess, granted, they took Carmen, so they're probably not going to take FCC, but um, either way, I take Tea Time. Um, my plan here is to just ban out the Operator Cigarette, honestly. Um, I felt like I didn't have anything that was so horribly counter that I couldn't just ban out the Opsig, I guess. Um, I think that was probably a little bit of a risky decision on my part. Um, so very interesting that they take Amelia and Solitaria. You don't see a lot of Solitarias. Um, I take Apoc Ravi because the opponent looks like he's very light on damage. Uh, my Apoc is on Seed, so I think it'll be a little hard to control her. You know, in retrospect, looking at this now, I think Rem might have been a good pick, just because Solitaria AoEs every turn. I do like the combination of Maiden Apoc, though. Like, having the double revive is really strong in Standard, because if something goes wrong, like, you almost always have a revive available to you. Okay, so here comes the Solitaria. Uh, interesting, the Solitaria is 8.7k HP, so probably damage built, I guess. Damage speed, maybe? Crit there, so yeah, I mean, that's like 6k damage, so uh, the Solitaria hits pretty hard. So the Viseria saves the skill 3, because I could just cleanse it off with Maid. So I think we just go into the Viseria here. All right, Carmen is going to buy the opponent quite a bit of time. Um, I debate about skill 3 with a maid to cleanse off those debuffs, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, my FCC is going to get a turn, I think, before the enemy can capitalize on the defense break, and these debuffs are just going to fall off. So I just hold the skill 3. You know, we can save it for whenever Viseria uses her skill 3. So FCC, I think, actually ended up working out pretty well because it's kind of a low damage comp from the opponent. So the shields from FCC, I think, are providing a good amount of value. Um, some debuffs come out from Solitaria there. So we're able to trigger the Immortality on Briar Witch. FCC does go down. But whenever Briar Witch takes a turn, my APOC is going to be able to kill her. And then I can... Uh, Revive FCC with the APOC skill 3. Could have gone for the bop on Amelia there. I didn't think I would get it. I, she probably has ER. And um, I just want to keep Briar Witch as low as possible so that, um, you know, in the event that she gets healed up or something by Amelia, you know, I, I'm able to score a kill with APOC. Probably better just to go on the Amelia there. You challenge me? All right, so Viseria is ripping the skill three. And gets the debuffs on Steny, but we have Maid, so we can just cleanse those off. Goes for the pushback and stun on Apoc to prevent the res. And gets a slow debuff on Apoc, which means my Maid may cut, which would be pretty funny. But even if Maid doesn't cut, I think I can probably still get around to the skill 3. Armin, 
Okay, so May does not cut. That's unfortunate. Uh, but we can just res everyone with Maid. Uh, Briar, which is Saria's skill 3, is on cooldown, so we're safe to do that. And now we can just rip skill 3 here. I wish Solitaria was more playable in RTA. She just doesn't really do enough. You know, I had like no focus units. Maybe he thought Apoc Ravi was focus. Okay, well, Briar Witch is down, so now we get to work on Amelia. I'd be curious what you guys think they would need to give to Solitary to make her usable. You could potentially make her skill 1 not trigger counters. I think that would go a long way. Uh, would that be OP, though? That might be OP. Alright, well, that's game. So, thanks for watching.